Hi, Wilmer. Hi, teacher. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Good. I'm happy to hear that. How was your How was your day today? A little bit busy. Really? Yes. Hmm, okay. Uh, a lot of university homework. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, um, the good thing is that, um, I guess the good thing is that uh, you have, you're gonna have a, a long weekend, right? So Saturday, Sunday, Monday is going to be off. <laughs> Right, so you're gonna have three days. Um, or are you gonna work, are you gonna work on on Monday? No, not. Oh, good. good. Okay, so at least you have uh, you have a chance to to um, to rest a little bit, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. How do you say aprovechar? Take advantage of. Can you write in the chat? Sure. Sure. Let me write that down. Take, take advantage of. Okay, so you could take advantage of something. Mm -hmm. Okay. For example, we have to advantage of weekend. Or... Take advantage of the long weekend. Don't forget to use okay. the verb. The verb is take, right? Take, take advantage of. Okay. But it, Thank you. It, it, it really depends on the context too, because take advantage of may, like take advantage of something is like a, it's a, has a, a positive connotation. So it's like, it means like, um, aprovechar, right? Aprovechar el momento, right? Or so um, that's take advantage of something. But if you take advantage of somebody, then it's not a good thing. That has a totally different um, connotation. It, it means take advantage of somebody. It's like I'm saying in Spanish, tomar provecho de alguien. Does that make yeah. sense? Yes, yeah, yes. Right, so tomar provecho de alguien o, uh, o aprovecharse de alguien, that's not a good thing, right? So, um, so, okay. so it, it really depends if it's about something or somebody. Okay, thank okay. you, teacher. You're welcome, you're welcome. Okay, hi guys. Hi, Luis. Hi, teacher. Um, hi, Diana. Hi, teacher, good evening. Good evening. Good Hi, evening. Delmi. Hi, Delmi. Are you there? Can you hear me? No? Can't hear me? Or maybe she's having trouble with her. Hello. Hi, there she is. Okay. How are you, Delmi? Giving me some problems. I'm pretty good, thank you. How are you? Good, good. I'm yeah, pretty good. Not bad at all. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, um. Let me see. Uh, and Jasmine, I have Jasmine here. How are you, Jasmine? Oh, uh, we can't hear you, Jasmine. I'm sorry. Do you want to try again? Open up your microphone. Maybe we can hear you again. Hi, good night. I'm good. Good. I'm glad to hear that, Jasmine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you're joining us today. Okay. And Josue, how are you doing today? Hi, teacher. I'm okay. Good, 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 good. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, um, all right. All right, guys, before I forget, um, something very important that I gotta tell you is 
that um, you know that normally our, our, our normal schedule is um, we'd start, we do classes from Monday to, to when, to, sorry, to Thursday, right? So today, for example, is our last day of the week together, right? Okay, so today yes. I know that Friday we don't have class. Now, next week, however, is a special week because you probably already know or, or, you, or maybe you don't remember, but next week we have a holiday, right? It's a national holiday and that's on Monday. So Monday, we're not going to be having classes. Got it? Okay. Yes. Good, okay. So Monday, no class. But we still are gonna have the four days of class, okay? And the four days of class, we're gonna be having it from Tuesday to Friday. So only for next week, okay? Only next week, like this is the, an exception. We're gonna be going from Tuesday to Friday, okay? So Friday, next Friday is actually gonna be our last class together. Sounds good? That's perfect. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, excellent. Um, and so that means that our next class together is gonna be on Tuesday. So we're gonna, so today is our last day of the week and then you're gonna come back on Tuesday, okay? Now, uh, something else I wanted to mention is that some people have been asking me about a message that um, was sent to you. Probably you received a message uh, from the administration area saying that you had worked on the platform. But um, I, I made a con I, I asked about the, that um, situation. And what they told me was that that was a, a message they had sent to everybody, just simply because we are coming to the end of the course. And uh, we want to make sure that everybody is finished on time. Remember that the primary goal of our course is for you to work in the platform, complete the platform, and get at least 80%, okay? And you may or may not um, get 80% the first time, but you always have a chance to practice again, practice again, until you get the 80%, okay? So the more you practice, the better the grader is going to be, and therefore you're going to be able to pass. So, but we cannot finish this course, or better said, so you cannot go to the next level if you are not finished the, the, the platform, okay? That's why it's so important for us to finish on time. Remember, next Friday is our last class together, and you should finish the platform by then. Okay, that's going to be your like your limit, your deadline. Okay, so um, I need you guys to be in this in this today's class. You should be um, in already section four. If you're not in section four, if you're not, you should actually almost be finished section four. But if you're not finished section four, remember you still have um, about a week pretty much to finish. And the good thing is that you have this long weekend, right? So you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and part of Tuesday there for our next class. So basically you have like five days left. So until our next class, and that should be more than enough time for you guys to catch up and be starting section five for next class, next class, okay? All right. Okay. Yes, teacher, it's okay. Yeah. Any any problems? No. No. Okay. Perfect. All right. In that guy. In that case, guys. Um, what we're gonna do right now. Let me see what else I was gonna I was gonna ask something, but I forgot what it was. 
All right, I already talked about the platform. Oh, oh, by the way, guys, um, some of you might be having problems getting to the platform. It's actually a problem that of the platform that like an international problem that's going on right now. Okay, so we're working on it. If you guys are having problems with it, um, don't worry, you're not the only one. Uh, we're still working on it. Just get it done as soon as possible. Okay, so um, uh, just, just, you know, bear with us a little bit. You guys probably already saw on the, in the WhatsApp group that, you know, they were letting you know that there's that problem, but it will be solved soon. Okay, so we don't despair. Okay. All right. So guys, um, what we're going to do right now, yesterday we were talking about the past perfect. And today I'm just going to quickly remind you a little bit about the past perfect. So we have simple, oops, simple past versus past perfect. Okay, and just a reminder: this I'm I'm, I'm not going to take very much time here. I just want to make sure that you guys remember um, what we talked about yesterday. Okay, so here we have our timeline. Here's the present. Everything before that is the past. Okay, so remember this is the the present. Okay, that point there is the present and everything over here is the past. And pretty much we talked about that there are uh, two actions that could happen in the past. Okay, so let's say one of the actions happened here. It's a little bit bigger, or better so a little bit thicker, so it's easier to see. Okay, so this action could happen over here, and that means that you right here you're going to be using the simple pass. Okay, and we might have another action over here. That happened before this action. So, um, and this action here. would be in the past perfect. Okay. So, so far, so good. Does this make sense for you guys? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, good. However, in reality, in real life, things yeah. don't happen like this, right? In the real life, it's not, three events, the present, an action before, and an action before that, right? It's not just three events that are happening in your whole life, right? Obviously, in real life, 
you're going to be having many different events, right? Okay, so there might be an event over here. I'm oh, sorry, let's change the color. There might be an event over here. In real life, there can also be another event. Over here. Okay. And maybe there's another event over here. Okay. So in real life, we have many different events happening in our life. Okay. So what's going to happen is just it's, it's very simple. If I'm talking about if this is my main activity, then the action that happens before that is going to be in the past perfect. But if this is my main activity, then if I'm talking about this action, this one is going to be in the simple past, and this one's going to be in the past perfect. If I'm talking about this activity as my main activity, and then I'm talking about this one over here, then this one is going to be in the simple past, and this one would be in the past perfect. And the same thing happens if I'm this is my main activity, and I'm talking about this one, then this one is going to be in the simple past, and this one is going to be in the past perfect. So basically, the first act, the first chronological action that you're talking about is going to be in the past perfect. And the second action that we're talking about is going to be in the simple past. Does that make sense? Yes. Questions? Any questions at all that you want to ask? No, thank you. Okay, good. Now, remember also, this over. Oh, wow. It's, there are, there's a lot of thunder right now. So that means it, it is going to rain. <laughs> okay, so remember the structure here. We have a subject. I'm oh, sorry. This is for the, set, the past perfect, right? So we have a subject plus had, if it's, an, if it's affirmative, and hadn't, if it's negative, plus past perfect, sorry, past participle. And then if it's necessary, we're going to have a complement. Okay, so that's the structure of the past perfect. Okay. Now, this is about this, this is just a regular sentence, but what happens if you're asking a question? Right? Um, so, for example, Remember yesterday we were talking about going to the movies and buying popcorn, right? And having dinner before going to the movies. So maybe you can ask your partner for, or you can ask um, your friend. Um, ya, eh, ¿por, qué no, ¿Por qué no compraste palomitas de maíz en, la, en, el, en el cine? Eh, ya habías comido Oh, ya había cenado antes de ir al, al cine, right? So that question here is going to be using in the past perfect. So instead, what we're going to do, the structure that we're going to be using is very simple. It's just making sure that the, the, the same structure here, but just making sure that the auxiliary is at the beginning. So basically, we start like this. We're going to say had plus subject plus past participle plus complement if it's necessary.
Okay. And obviously the question, the question mark right at the end. So an example of this would be For example, had you seen the movie trailer before you saw the movie, for example. This is an example, right? Had you seen the movie trailer before you saw the movie? Okay. Or for example, Had they been to Paris before? So here we had had, the auxiliary. Subject is they, plus participle been, and then complement to Paris before, okay? Or we have, um, So we can say, for example, had we met him before the party? I don't remember. So here we had, we had, so we had, the subject would be we, past participle of meet is met, and here we have a compliment, him before the party. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? Does this make sense or not really? So, so, just um, I need uh, other examples, maybe? Um, okay. Teacher? Yeah? Is it correct if I say, for example, in the first example, uh, had you seen the movie trailer before watching the movie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's possible too. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so basically all we're doing is here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something so that it'll be easier for you. Instead of giving you more, more, more um, examples, let me see if I can help you visualize it. Okay, so the first thing you got to do here is put the auxiliary had. And if you notice, in all of them, we have the auxiliary. We start, better said, we start with the auxiliary had. Okay. So, so far, so good? Okay. So, yes. Okay, good. Then after that, um, you will notice that according to the, to the um, structure, we need to have a subject, okay? And that's exactly what we have here. We have a subject, okay? Oops.
Okay. So far, so good? Yes. Okay, good. And after that, sorry, I, okay. yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, tell me. They have been to Paris before. How could be that translation in Spanish? Um, ellos ya habían ido a París anteriormente. Okay, thank you. Okay. And actually, I'm going to talk about that in a moment um, because I, I understand where your confusion comes from. We'll talk about that before, uh, sorry, later. Okay, after that, we have a, what it asks for is to use the past participle, right? And if you notice, we're using over here in all of them the past participle. Scene. Then we have then. And then we have met. Okay, all of those are past participles. Sounds good? So far, so good? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's clear now. Okay, good. All right. Um, and then finally, we have the complement, right? If needed, right? It, only if needed. And that's exactly what we have in the other one. So we have the complement over here. All of this is the complement. And over here, all of this is the complement. And in this one, all over here is the complement. So there you go. That's the structure. Okay. Lots of colors. Okay. <laughs> in case you guys, uh, for those of you that um, just like it in black and white, I'm sorry. I like colors. <laughs> okay. All right. So there you go. There's the, the structure. Now, um, something I wanted to mention is the following. It, yeah, um, for example, this may sound a little weird. Um, had, so have they been to Paris before? Now, I'm, I, this is actually something that I'd be writing over here, probably mostly because of space. Okay. The past participle, what is the past participle of go? Gone. Gone. Right. So past participle. So go. Um, I'm going to. So the past participle of go is gone, right? The past participle of go is gone. However, there's another, another uh, past participle of go. Do you know what it is? No. It's the one we have over here. Been? Yeah, exactly. Really? <laughs> yeah, I know, weird. What? Yeah, I know, I know, it's so weird. But yeah. That's something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna explain why, okay? So I, I, I don't want you guys to just go around thinking that it's interchangeable, no. We use go, uh, the past participle of go can be, is gone and it could be been, but it depends on the context, okay? Because okay. what happens in, should I change the color here so that I don't confuse you guys. Okay, there you go. Okay, so it really actually depends on the meaning or the context, okay? What, when, when, when do I use gone? It means gone means um, to go and stay there. Okay. And been means to um, go and 
come back. And that's the difference. Okay. Does that make sense? So if I'm saying for, I'll give you an example. If I say um, he had, he had gone, okay, for example, um, um, let me think. He, he didn't, um, he wasn't working at that place anymore because he had gone to England. Okay, so, so he wasn't working at that place anymore because he had gone to England. That means that he went to England and he stayed there and he never came back. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense? Yeah. So he can't work at that place anymore because he's no longer at that place. He never came back. He went to England. He lives now in England, never came back. But if I say, for example, um, this one, for example, um, had they been to Paris before? What you're asking is, did they go to Paris? And did they come back from Paris? It's, you don't want to know if they are still in Paris. You want to know if they went to Paris and they came back from Paris. Does that make sense? Claire, does that make sense? Yes, teacher. Okay, I'm actually gonna, it's like, I'm gonna tell you this in Spanish, so it's, so it's a, I know that, that probably the majority of you are clear on about this, but just to make sure that, that you understand it. It's like saying, um, okay, so the first one, he, he didn't work there anymore because he had gone to, to England. It would be in Spanish, él ya no trabajaba allí porque él se había ido a Inglaterra. But I can also say, eh, for example, ellos habían, eh, ellos habían ido a París anteriormente. Ellos habían ido. The other one, él, the other one would be, él se había ido. Does that make sense? Yeah. El había ido is different from el se había ido. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So if you say el se había ido, it means el se fue y ya nunca regresó. El se había ido. But if I say el había ido, it means like, sí, fue, pero luego regresó. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right? I think that I'm understanding now. Okay, good. Good, good. All right. So, yeah, something something new that you probably learned a few, you know, this is something, yeah, to take into account that not all the yeah. time the past part is uh -huh. right. I'm understanding the being of go, mm -hmm. but in Spanish. Yeah, exactly. That's why I, I I I decided to explain that that little part in Spanish because that way you can understand the actual meaning of the of the two of the two parts. Okay. But but actually, um, it wouldn't be much difference, right? If I if I take the verb being like estado. For example, had you had they been to Paris before? Habían ellos estado en París antes? For okay. example, Good it question. means the same, right? Good question. No. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, and I'm going to answer by actually changing this. 
Oops. Nope. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So this one would be okay. Had they been to Paris before means habían habían ellos ido a París anteriormente. Ido in in Spanish comes from ir, right? Which comes from go. In it, like ir in the English is go. So, had they been to Paris before it means, habían ellos ido a París anteriormente? But if I want to say, habían ellos estado en París anteriormente, what I have to do is actually change this. Instead of saying, been, been to, I would have to say, been in. And then that would oh, change yeah. the meaning. Had they been... So or it means yeah. would be in Spanish. Ellos habían estado, oh, habían ellos estado en París anteriormente. Okay, so let me understand. If I put the 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 um, the preposition to, it means that I'm talking about the verb gone. Yes. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. I think it's clear. It's and if you use clear. the preposition in, then been comes from the, okay. the verb be. Okay. Okay. So using to makes it from the the verb go. Yeah. And using in makes it from the the verb. Uh, even 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 if you could write the other sentences, it would be better, I think, because like that we could have more examples and we can compare the two sentences, so that we can understand better. I think. Because I'm going to take a picture, for example, but after I'm not going to remember it, <laughs> I imagine. You mean putting like had been in Paris before? Yeah, and after put had they been to Paris? Okay, yeah, I can. So that we can compare. I can do that. Yeah, I'll make it easier for you. No. Please. Because sometimes after the class you don't remember. Right. <laughs> right. No, I, I understand. It's okay. I understand. Actually, I'm going to put it down here. Mm. Hold on. Let me try this. Because if I do that, then the whole other things are going to move. So I'm going to see if I can yeah. fit in here. Okay. Yeah. Here's more. Okay. And then that would be coming from B. Teacher? Yeah? Uh, but this only happened in the present perfect tense or happens in the in other any in the tense. in the past perfect in the present perfect it's the same in all of the perfects yeah okay. uh, uh, not all the perfect because we also have perfect progress or perfect continue oh, okay okay uh -huh. so in that case like i said then would come from me teacher i have a question sure uh, for example, you only use the the been to. Okay, the preposition to just for go, right? But just in that way, the only way that you can use uh, the been as uh, as go. When we use it with to, yes. Just with to. Yes. Not you can use it uh, another way. Uh, no, no, that's, that's the rule. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. 
think. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, so what do you think? Does that make sense for you guys now? You're, you're, it's starting to come yeah. together? You know what? Yeah. I I don't really I don't really I remember that I had already read some sentences like that, uh -huh. but I never understood why they put the the two instead uh -huh. of in. Right. So I, I I thought that it was the same. <laughs> and you're like, why? You know what's what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Well, now you know, right? Yeah. Now you yeah. understand. That's that's the idea here, right? Able to understand. Yeah. Right, and it's incredible how one little word makes a difference, right? So that that to and that in that preposition is going to make the whole difference, right? Yeah. Okay, so you got to be careful about that. Okay, so it's not like whatever comes to my mind. It's like no, it you know you got to be careful putting in or to because it's going to change the whole meaning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good, everybody? Yes, no? Yeah. Can yeah, I have a question? Yeah, ask me. Yes. You translate the sentence in Spanish con how, ya. Ya habían estado en París. But uh, it's not necessary to put already. Already in the question. Sorry. Yeah. Well. Um. No. Sorry. Sorry. If I, I I didn't really notice if I had said yeah, but if I did, um, sorry. It, it, it you would have to put the word, um, already to make it yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would have to be for in this case, if you translate in Spanish, it would be um. Habían estado, no, sorry, habían ido a París anteriormente. That would be this one. Habían ido a París anteriormente. And this would be habían, habían, well, sorry, sorry. To be on, to be back, habían ellos estado en París anteriormente. Oh, sorry. Okay. Erase backwards. Sorry. Forget what I just said. Okay. This one would be habían ellos ido a París anteriormente. And this one would be, yeah. habían ellos estado en París anteriormente. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, you can get confused easily. Yeah, so just remember, <laughs> to is with go, and in is with be. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do right now. Yeah. Any questions you guys have before I continue? No. No? Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna understand is that we if we have the preposition to. Uh -huh. We are meaning we are wanted we are want uh, we want to say that uh, um, we want to make a reference to the verb gone. If we have the preposition in, we are making a reference about the the verb be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what it would be. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now. Let's go in, going back to this. Let's go back to this um, this uh, timeline. Okay, now in this timeline, like I said, in real life, there's, it's not just two actions that happen. In real life, there are many actions that happen. 